love my producer, Justin Powell, KHTS Sports Director, is with us, as he always is. Master on, Mixer. On the Master Mixer, every Monday at 1 o'clock. I know you love our shows. We get the phone calls. We get people waiting to get in. And uh, sorry if we're keeping you on hold. We're going to do our Northern California uh, Sports Report here in a couple of minutes. I'm here with Coach Greg Herrick, two Hall of Fames. I'm in nobody's Hall of Fame, but uh, my granddaughter's. And uh, Coach Herrick, John, uh, is the winningest college basketball coach in the history of the state of California. How do you like his winning record? Is seven. If you believe that, I got a Beretta for you. His his win. He's got a seventy percent winning record, John. Seventy percent. John Ranty, our very special sports reporter from the Chicago area, the Midwest, covering all of Chicago sports. So let's get into the Cubbies, the World Series champions, great World Series uh, game yeah, last well, year. And yeah, uh, this year we'll meet you again, the the Dodgers, and uh, this time I think we, we'll take you guys down this, this year. This year. They haven't, the Cubs haven't started out as hot as they did last year. They're 13 and 11, but Rizzo is hot. Rizzo had three consecutive games where he hit a home run in each game, and you could just see the way he was fouling that ball, and he was just going to bury it every time. Yeah, but last but, night, uh, but last night he, he missed that play in the dirt. He should have scooped it up against Boston. You see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, he, uh, about it, it would have been three outs, and they would have got out of that inning. But but you got a weak little division. Uh, you guys are leading Milwaukee by a game and a half, and then you got a horrible. St. Louis got rid of all their players. They got nobody. Cincinnati, nobody, and Pittsburgh, nobody. So uh, the Cubbies will be in the playoffs for sure. Jeez, you know, this yeah. this kid Bryant, Chris Bryant. What is about this kid? Is is he as nice as everybody says he is? Uh, he sure seems to be that way when you see him here in Chicago in local interviews. But you know, I mean, you're asking how the, why the ladies like him. Well, he's 25 years old. He's six foot five, 215 pounds. I mean, filthy rich, know, filthy rich. Born in Las Vegas. Everything's moving to Las Vegas, isn't it? The uh, coach you from Oakland. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders for 30 seconds. Herrick is excited, and I'm going to go see the Raiders too. John, will you come with me? I'll go with you, but listen, you got to come with me to a Chicago Blackhawk game when the NHL goes to Las Vegas. If you go there now and you drive on the highway there right next to the Strip, you'll see the most beautiful new ice rink they built for the NHL team. Well, yeah, the, 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 what do they call the Golden Knights? That's, yeah, that's Knights. Las Vegas Golden Knights. Las Knight. Vegas Golden Knights. No, that's the T1 uh, arena. So I will, we, not, I will not be attending any of those games. But but if <laughs> but if you could coax me into it, I, I would uh, dinner at the Palm and, and a hockey game, I could get into it. All right, we covered the Cubs for a second. We covered the Bulls. They're out of the playoffs. Uh, we covered the Bears. You guys hate your pick. Uh, and yeah. we covered the Blackhawks, which are also out of the playoffs. John, we'll see you next week. Uh, All right, thanks. We'll thanks, see guys. you next week. John oh, Ranty, John, everybody, John, our, John. our uh, sports reporter from Chicago, covering all Midwest sports for us here in California. 93 degrees here at KHTS 1220, an award-winning radio station. Coming up now is our Northern California sports reporter. Uh, did he hang up? Patrick, hang up? Uh, hung up. Because uh, he wanted to challenge you today. You you heard his feelings last week when you said North, San Jose was not Northern Everybody's California. trying to be a Bay Area. and You know, I told you. Northern California is Bay Area or North. That's what it is. Where's San Jose? It's Central. Oh, my God. Uh, 49ers, I like their draft. Patrick, are you back with us? Uh, this is uh, Flip from Castaic. Oh, we love Castaic listeners. Our show is heard out there. It's heard, actually, from Castaic to Lancaster. What's on your mind, Flip? Good to have well, you listening. Uh, before, uh, before I say anything, I uh, just want to let you know I'm coming down the 101 freeway. And uh, in Thousand Oaks, and you guys come in as clear as a uh, clear as day. So tell the uh, the owners they get reception out in Thousand Oaks on the one on one. Well, we knew that we don't we don't plug Thousand Oaks, my hometown. But uh, thank you. Well, What's yeah. on your mind, so I caller? The, uh, I want to ask the basketball coach what does he think of uh, what the Lakers are going to do? Because I'm a big Laker fan. Well, the Lakers have to get uh, a superstar player in there. The, 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 the roster as it is now is not capable of competing in the Western Division of the NBA. They're going to have to get a, a player to, to stature of somebody like Paul George or, uh, or, uh, or Westbrook or somebody like that, especially in L.A. They've got the money to do it, 
and uh, and they got to they got to get a better play. You know, it's all about players. Who's the best team in the NBA? The Golden State Warriors. They have the best players. That's just the way it is. All Flip, right, coach. Uh, yeah, Flip. Show. How did you get through our callers? Because we normally charge. Uh, well, we're waiving the five hundred dollar call in fee today, so you're lucky that you got in. Uh, t- well, there's a there's a place called Players. Uh, that had a great day for the kid today, just so you know. Well, congratulations, Flip. Thanks for listening to the show we call Coach's Corner. Great question about the uh, Lakers that will take probably another 15 years uh, before we'll ever see them in the playoffs again. Thanks for calling, Flip. Well, he's gone. All right, so uh, our guest from, uh, well, our, everybody's gone. Our Northern California guy hung up. Our guy from, uh, what's the school? He must camp? have hurt his feelings again. Canyon, Canyon, Canyon High, School. High School, Canyon Cowboys. Well, uh, football I should season, have been a cowboy. Football season is only four months away. So, what is the sport right now, Justin? You're you're a millennial. Do, do, what is what sport does your age group really pay attention to? Seriously, good question, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> do you have a sport uh, that you're? That, no, I don't think so. I think it's the same as it always has been the last twenty years. Football, it's spring football, 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 and basketball. Yeah, it's football, MMA, not, not baseball. MMA, uh, well, yeah, fighting. No, yeah, MMA is a big one that is really popular yeah. with with young people. Yeah, I, so. it's brutal. I actually, yeah, I'm not a, it's. It, I'll take a peek. Have you ever looked at that? MMA? Yeah, any. And let me tell you this about brutal. my evaluation of that. Anytime you can hit a guy when he's on the ground, yeah. I, I'm not into that. Well, it's it's a brutal sport. Uh, when you when you look at. Uh, Talk yeah. about scrambled brain cells. That that sport. Yeah, Ooh. those guys. I mean, how honestly? Uh, we have a, uh, our North California callers on. Patrick, are you there? Yep, I'm here. So last week, I know he hurt his feelings. He he continually wants to hurt your feelings, and he he says San Jose is is basically Central California. But give us a report. Let's talk about the 49ers draft. I thought they had one of the best drafts. The 49ers. Uh, of all the teams, I, I thought that running back Joe Joe Williams uh, is a great pickup that uh, they got. Let's talk a little bit about baseball. Your Giants. Let's see where the Giants are. Hold on a second. Giants. Oh, last place, nine and seventeen. Absolutely. It, so, does anybody care about the uh, San Francisco Giants anymore? Well, I think right now it's just the fact that they've only won two out of the last five games. Bumgarner's injured. I think right now we just kind of have to let this uh, bad time uh, ride the bad times uh, way towards, uh, you know, when Bumgarner gets back. But, again, we don't know when that's going to happen. So I think at this point we're just going to kind of let have to let the, 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 the bad play through and hopefully with some experience and some time, you know, we could put a – have the team fire on all cylinders at the same time. Now, they're, talking about, they're talking about six months for Bumgarner. What did he do, uh, uh, Patrick? What did, did he bust ribs? What did he do? Well, he has bruised ribs, and then he also uh, had another injury. I can't seem to find all the details of all the injuries. His I'm not shoulder. Sure I think it was his shoulder. I think it was his shoulder. Yeah, and, 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 and right now they don't know if he has to do surgery or not. But I did do a little bit of research on the contract, and it seems like there's a hush-hush thing saying that he, 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 he's not allowed to per contract to ride dirt bikes, but if the organization and the coach says it's okay, uh, he can. So I'm not sure where the fault lies here, if it lies with him or it lies with the team saying that, you know, he's able to do it. I don't know, because it seems like as of right now, nobody's taking fault at it. He's not getting docked any pay. Nothing seems to be happening from it. So I'm not sure if they were okay with it, and it just happens to be. Looks like the Giants, uh, the Dodgers open a series with the Giants tonight. Tonight, yeah. So let's see what happens. All right, uh, you know that Coach Herrick, uh, Greg Herrick, is from uh, Oakland. Uh, Great. Lived in the fancy hills of Berkeley. Is that where you live? No, uh, East Oakland. I just bought a new shirt straight out of East Oakland. Wow, East (laughs) Oakland. So let's talk for 10 seconds about the Oakland Athletics. Here, here's what I'm curious about, and I kind of support Coach on this. They have the lowest payroll in professional sports, but they're competitive, Patrick. And I, yeah, I mean, they're they're competitive, but they're still not doing all that well. well There's not enough wins. Only ten wins on the on their uh, you know on the board. So I'm not sure you can be you can have the cheapest you know payroll. You can have all this stuff, but if you can't win, I mean, like. Well, they're eleven well, and fourteen. Yeah, let, 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 let me put this analysis out there for you: the, the Dodgers. Won fourteen games, right? 
The, right. The A's have won 11 games, so that's like there's only three games difference between the two teams. Correct. The Dodgers payroll is 245 million, and the A's is 83 million. So if you're going to get, uh, you know, baseball for your buck, I'm thinking right. that uh, the A's 11 wins is is pretty good for 83 million bucks. Oh no, I would I would agree 100. percent And I know that you know uh, as we speak right now. I would rather be in the Bay Area and be an A's fan than than anywhere else. But you know what? I'm not going to start the Bay Area and South and SoCal argument again. I like you already, <laughs> Patrick McKinney, our Northern California sports reporter. I w- I'll say this: professional athletes to me are overpaid for the entertainment value. I would rather see this money go to research and cancer. I'd rather see this money go to better causes. These guys are spoiled. Coach Herrick and I, uh, Patrick, going to do a show in a couple of weeks about talent. About uh, uh, very nice. And our Clippers. Uh, here's five seconds on this disastrous team. Uh, <laughs> they're they're. How much did they pay your guy DeAndre? Millions, right? DeAndre. This guy's loafing up and down the floor. He won't rebound. Anyway, back to Northern California. Back to Patrick McKinney. So we have the what about Oakland- the Golden State Warriors. You. I knew you were going to get Come there. On, go ahead. The you and Patrick, State, go Patrick, ahead. Patrick, tell you us about Patrick. the Golden State Warriors opening up the semifinals tomorrow night against the number five rated Utah Jazz. Yeah, the Utah Jazz that's in that's uh, played with injuries. I think right now I'm expecting a four to five game series. I, I don't know if the Warriors are going to give them one game just to, for prosperity purposes, but I think with all the rest that the Warriors have, it's going to be a clean sweep. You know, the, the, the last team that the Warriors lost to this year, was the Utah Jazz? I think it was. Yeah, that's why I said they'll they'll give them one game for prosperity purposes, so it doesn't look really bad on their on their team. But I think it'll go either in four or five. You know why I think the Warriors are are going to kill them is because I one time I got in, a, in an uh, elevator at a hotel and and Quinn Snyder, the coach of Utah, got was in the elevator talking to himself, and <laughs> and uh, I knew from then on he was in, anybody he was coaching was in trouble. Exactly. So, uh, uh, your team, uh, what, what are they called, the Warriors? What, what? Golden State yeah, Warriors. Golden State Warriors. So, they have beaten Utah by an average spread of like 25 points. Something like that, yeah. So, so it's eight, eight, out of, eight out of the contest. last nine times. Yeah, so I wonder which game they're going to lay down on. I wonder, uh, they won't lay down maybe tonight. Three? Tomorrow, huh? tomorrow maybe night. Maybe three or four, maybe. Same so game three. They'll, they, yeah. where do they, in Utah. They'll lay yeah. down in Utah. <laughs> Just yeah. give them one game so they so their fans can be happy that they won one game in the second round. I'll tell you I'll tell clean. you what though the way they played against Portland in that game four when they went out to that big lead, if they're playing yep. at at their best, they, uh, it's hard to imagine that anybody in the, can beat them. I mean, I think exactly. Cle- I think Cleveland can beat them because they have good players too, but I think when the Warriors are clicking on all cylinders, uh, the, the the you know they, they've got the shoot they got three Olympians. You know, uh, the NBA's MVP, the leading scorer in the MB, I mean, you know, in the league. I mean, every f- fact, the defensive player of the year, uh, Draymond Green. Well, I'll see right. how you guys do against Cleveland. We'll wait till that discussion, until, <laughs> wait till we get. So, real quick, did you see the front page of the Sports Illustrated this uh, last week? Did you see who's I did on? not. So, the kid that's on there is a high school senior from Notre Dame High School, but he lives here in our town in Santa Clarita. Uh-huh. And uh, in in Northern California, where you are, is there any great high school kids that people are talking about, football or basketball or baseball? Not that I know, but I could do some research for next week. Yeah, I'd love, love to know what's going on with high school in Northern California. Is there one sure, kid? I could definitely do some re- research. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Patrick, thank you, pal. Appreciate the report every week. Northern California sports. So we cover the Warriors. We'll, we'll cover them more when they uh, play the Cavaliers. And uh, choke again. Oh, we, we cover the Gi- oh. we cover the Giants. We cover the A's. Are we missing a team? What are we missing? What well, are we missing? Well, all we have to do is talk about the 49ers and the fact that their first three uh, picks were defense. The Anaheim Ducks. Uh, no, the, do? uh, San- the San Jose Sharks. They didn't make it. They didn't make it. They didn't make it. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Have a great yeah, no day. Problem. Thank you, pal. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, Coach Herrick and I, and we're going to talk about something that uh, I brought up this morning. Coach and I have coffee every morning at Starbucks. You can join. I'd love to have you join us over there next to Corner Bakery. Uh, We're going to talk about talent because uh, it's a big issue 
talent. What is talent? Uh, his son was all state, all American. Uh, but can you acquire talent? That's my question. If you're listening out there and you've got a son or daughter that is a hard worker, that's inspiring, that is a team player, uh, that actually practices, shows up on time, uh, can they achieve great results if they don't have the same talent? as some of the other kids. We'll be right back. Let's answer that question from a Hall of Famer. His name is Coach Greg Herrick on the show we call Coach's Corner here on KHTS. Talent, talent. Uh, let's talk about talent, Coach. You're listening to Coach's Corner on KHTS 1220 AM. Uh, the state of California's award-winning radio station. So your kid, so your book, Robert and Michael. Michael's All-State, All-American, gets a ride to D1 school. Robert gets a full scholarship to Annapolis D1 baseball player. They inherited genes from you or Maryland. Which which one of you is the athlete? Be well, I, I always tell the story uh, how I met my wife. I coached her brother in high school. On my, He was on my first basketball team that I coached. And uh, as it turns out, my wife had five brothers. They were all 6'2 or taller. Now, the one I coached turned out to be 6'5". The parents were tall. My wife's five eight, so I go. This is perfect for breeding purposes. You know, I'm gonna have, I'm yeah. gonna have big tall athletes because yeah. I was an athlete. Right. So I go. The combination's awesome. Yeah. Well, Robert, my oldest son, Robert, is not taller than me. I'm five eleven. He's five about five ten. Michael got to six one, but that was it, and that, and that's why he didn't make it to the NFL. And my daughter's five two. So those plans <laughs> evaporated. All, all evaporated very quickly. And I and, and I always tell her, I go, it's your fault. She goes. Well, my brother, her brother was a fifth-round draft choice of the the New York Yankees baseball player. But how many how many dads, the dream of every dad who's a sports enthusiast, who has a kid in a sport, would love to have a son get scholarships to D1 schools. You had two sons. Well, my, my kids, when they were growing up, were always involved with me and my profession. I mean, I, you know, sometimes I'd bring them to the gym, you know, when I was coaching because my wife had to work and uh, – I'd bring them over to the side, shoot around, shoot some baskets. Well, my kids were pretty good basketball players as well, but they realized that their future wasn't in another, both of them in other sports. But Michael, my son Michael, did a TV show in Flagstaff once where he said, you, know, you can see it on the internet, where he says, my dad, uh, being around my dad helped me become an athlete because I saw his preparation and I saw his hard work and I saw. So, so I think those things were, I was lucky to have, that advantage to most parents. But they had talent. The they, fact that they got exposed to you, which also, luck, well, what we were talking about this morning, luck plays a big part of this. Well, you know, the, the one of the greatest... They didn't uh, get injured. The greatest One of the greatest sports days of my life was when my son pitched against Duke, and he said that on the air when we had him as a guest. Uh, one, that was one of my greatest days, because everybody told him he wasn't going to make it. He, he didn't have the physical gifts. But he worked very hard at his craft, uh, pitching. He did all he was supposed to do. He learned as much about it. He practiced as much as he could. Then when my son Michael came along, he had God-given gifts. He, 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 was, he was talented in anything he tried. He was, he was fantastic. And then when he found his passion, which was football, it was just uh, like a rocket ship taking off. So here's my question, because uh, you, you've had 70% of your seasons have been winning seasons. You've seen hundreds and hundreds. You won the CIF championship at Cleveland High School. You're in the Cleveland Hall of Fame. Have you seen kids come through that did not have the same amount of talent as, let's say, of the star on the team, but that kid turned out to be a better player, a uh, more coachable player, and a player that achieved more in life? Well, I'll give you an example. You know, in 1982, I'm coaching Cleveland High. I've got two players. One, you know, went on to be All-American, played professional basketball, drafted in the NBA. I had another one drafted by the Kings on the same team. And they were they were good, but just not good enough. We're playing Palisades High School, and they have a guard named Steve Kerr. I think you've heard of him. He was like the fourth best player on their team. Now, how does and he short? Get, yeah. How does he get to the point where he goes to Arizona on a basketball scholarship and then wins five rings in the NBA? If you had asked me when we played against him and, you know, I, I, I prepared my game plan, he wasn't even a factor. I go, he, he can shoot it, but that's it. He but, made it to the end. He won five rings in the was, NBA. Was he a little, do you remember him as a little yeah, skinny I do blonde remember, kid? I do remember him. 
So, Justin. So there you go. There's a guy right there that created his his didn't uh, have all the talent. Didn't have all the talent. So, what is it? It's a combination of uh, uh, perseverance, a combination of uh, working hard, a combination of luck, a combination of desire. How many kids? Really, really love their sport. My son loved football. Michael Herrick loved football. I mean, he he loved football. The thing about it is, is all of those things are tied into one thing. Yes, it's like <laughs> talent and and the work ethic are are. It's a it's a combination. You have to have the talent to be able to put it all that in. But it always comes down to your discipline. Like you can love the sport as much as you want. It's not about playing the sport. It's about waking up at five in the morning and working out for two hours and then eating right and then going to school and then working out again when you get home and then eating right. It's a combination of all of those things that, that fall into that. It starts with everyone your, has talent. Yeah. It usually. starts with your gifts. Yeah. That, that's where it starts. You know, you, you know, I, I don't care how much I practice. I'm not going to make the professional golf tour. I'm not, I don't have that gift, but yeah, but, but some, some, my son, I, I know I'm a coach. I, I've, I've coached NBA players, uh, Cy Young Award winners. I've seen what it takes to when, be. What age, and we're almost done here on the Coach's Corner. We're on every Monday, so maybe we'll pick this up next Monday. Uh, what age, real quick, Justin, do you see a kid? Is it 7, 8, 9, 10? What, what do you think? It's about, well, it, what, when you see their actual, well, this kid is exceptional, exceptionally talented, exceptionally gifted, I'd say 8, 8, 9. I felt like when I was about 8 years old, I was so far better than the kids I was playing. That I mean, people could see it. Parents could see it, you know. And then you move on to higher levels of playing. I think it's when they, when you reach your physical, uh, you know, your your size, your, fi- your how you're gonna be. I know, you know, both my sons were tall when they were young, and so and hence their strength allowed them to dominate. Things. Well, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, so it, it starts then. You can see, okay, this kid has it, the hand-eye coordination to play these sports, and then obviously. Once you hit that puberty, that growth spurt, then obviously it changes to the point where, okay, now this kid has the physical stature to, to back up that he clearly has talent at the sport. Well, Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans, he was a guard in high school at six foot one. He grew nine inches in, in, in his high school and uh, became See you next great. week. See you next week on Coach's Corner. KHTS 1220 AM.